Well, howdy guys. I'm here to talk to you about um, vinegar and baking soda stoichiometry lab. Uh, so um, you'll need to go through this and try to just read through the very, very simple procedure. Um, I will show you how this works. But essentially, let's uh, get an idea for what's going on here. You're going to react vinegar. That's acetic acid. And so vinegar, think about vinegar right now. Vinegar is actually about 5% acetic acid. The rest of it is 95% water. So um, that is going to be an aqueous solution. Okay. And then baking soda. We understand what baking soda is. We understand the state of matter that it's in. It's a solid. Right? Um, and then, so when you react the two of them together, you are going to produce sodium acetate. This is a salt. Right? This is a type of salt. Not the salt that you that you eat, um, and so this is called. Um, and this, you will not be able to see. It is going to be dissolved in solution. It's going to be colorless, not clear, colorless. And then you will get um, water. Now, water is a pure substance, so water is a liquid. Okay, only pure substances can be liquids. And then you will get CO2 gas. Now, that's that fizzy bubbles that you see. We're aware of CO2 gas, and we're aware of this reaction you've seen in baking soda and vinegar volcano before. So, I don't exactly have to explain what it is or anything. You know what happens. This is what's going to go on. Now, here is the idea for this. We're going to use the law of conservation of mass. We understand that this part right here, these are our reactants. And we understand that this part over here is our products, right? Now we know that the masses of the two must be equal, okay? Thanks to the law of conservation of mass. Well, we're going to know the masses of the reactants. We're going to measure those, okay? And then we're going to find the masses of the products, okay? Now the goal here is to be able to find the mass of this guy. What is the mass of CO2? How many grams of CO2 are there? So what we're going to do is essentially we're going to find the masses of, the, of our after right here. So instead of finding the mass of the total products, we're going to find the mass of this chunk right here. Because we're going to be able to put this on the balance right here. So this is what we call the after, right? We'll just call this, this is what happened at the end, right? This is the stuff we're going to be left with in a beaker. So we're going to find the masses of this in a beaker, right? Uh, beakers. And then find the mass of this at the end. If this minus this is going to equal the mass of your CO2. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, if uh, it's if you need a little bit of help with the calculations, the they're pretty self-explanatory in your data table. Um, I'll tell you like in parentheses where it'll, it'll say something like two minus one. Um, what I'm saying is line two minus line one. Okay, I'm not saying actually saying to do two minus one, right? Um, uh, again, I'll say five minus six. I'll say eight minus one or eight dash one, right? Or eight minus one. And I mean line 8 minus line 1. Um, so you'll have to look at the paper to, to understand what I'm talking about there. But you'll figure it out. Um, you should be able to um, type in whatever we see. So let's take a look at the uh, reaction and see what happens.
welcome back. Now that we have um, done the experiment, uh, we now can see that the mass of uh, CO2 that we measured um, was 0 0.56 grams. Okay? Simple enough. Um, so that's what we measured. Now let's see how close we were to what we should have gotten. Well, how do we know what we should have gotten? Well, we can calculate that. All right? And that's um, from on the next page. So if you look at the discussion questions, that would be um, these right here. Uh, questions one and questions two, you should understand. Question three, identify the limiting reactant. Question four, identify the excess reactant. Well, I'll just give you a hint. The excess reactant is the one we had left over. So um, think about that. You should be able to identify that. Question number five, let's do that. Using stoichiometry um, from the mass of the baking soda, calculate the theoretical yield of carbon dioxide. So, we're going to start with the mass of our baking soda. Why? Because that is our limiting reactant. Oh, I gave away the answers. So, um, the mass of the baking soda is going to be 1.05 grams of NaHCO3. You have to start with the limiting reactant, okay? Starting with the excess reactant is no good. You must start with the limiting. So, and then we start here, and so we're going to multiply, and we're going to convert that into moles. Grams of NaHCO3. We're going to change uh, that into moles of NaHCO3. And so that is going, we need to find the molar mass of that. So that's going to be 23. That's the molar mass for sodium plus 1 plus 12 plus 3 times 16 plus 1 plus 12 plus 16. That's going to be 84. 84 grams is, um, in one mole. And then we're going to, um, I hope I don't run out of room. We're going to convert moles of HCO, uh, moles of baking soda, NaHCO3, moles of CO2. We're trying to calculate how uh, the mass of CO2 we should have gotten from 1.05 grams of baking soda. So um, you have a mole ratio here, mole divided by mole, which tells me you don't go to the periodic table, you go to the equation. So the coefficient for sodium bicarbonate is 1, and then the, so the coefficient for this one is 1. So this is a 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, simple enough. And now we'll just convert the molar mass, and we'll convert moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. I know that's crooked. And so the molar mass of CO2 is 44. I'm pretty sure we'll run out of room, so we'll scoot this on over to the end. So we'll do this calculation. Um, check it out. All the ones will cancel out. Ones are unimportant. And so the units cancel out. Right? Moles, moles cancels out. Moles of CO2, moles of CO2 cancels out. The last unit we have is grams of CO2. That's the one we need. So um, your calculator work is 1.05 times 44 divided by 84. That's what you have to type in the calculator. We'll do that right now. And so we get 0 0.55 grams of CO2. That is our theoretical yield. That's what we should get. Okay, so what was it? What did we measure? Ooh, we got pretty darn close. We measured 0 0.56 grams of CO2. That's the closest I've ever gotten, by the way. I'm just, I'm just going to brag a little bit. All right, so um, 0 0.55 grams. Question number six is to ask about the percent yield and the percent error. Let me show you how to do that. So um, we know that this is our actual yield. Our 
Okay? And we said our theoretical um, yield was 0 0.55 grams. Okay? So it looks like we overshot it just a little bit. Which is uh, actually probably right. 0 0.55 grams. So, uh, to calculate the percent yield, you will do actual. We've done this before. Um, actual yield over the theoretical. Theoretical yield. Multiply by 100. Now, to do the percent error, um, one way you could do that is just do 100 minus your percent yield. That's one way to think about it. Uh, it's essentially saying how close are you to 100%. Um, or, um, this is actually the way they want you to do it. They want you to do actual, um, actual minus the theoretical. over the theoretical. Okay, now sometimes uh, this um, ends up being a negative number and that blows people's minds for a second. So you take the absolute value of that. If you don't know what absolute value means, um, that means that uh, you are, if it's negative, you just make it positive. If it's positive, you keep it positive. So just get a positive number, all right? So that is the percent error. So you should be able to do that on your own very simple calculations. All right, and then the last question. Matter cannot be created or destroyed in a reaction. That sounds like the law of conservation of mass. Um, does this apply to this lab? Uh, I hope so. If you uh, need help on that question, you should refer back to the beginning of the video. All right, that should be it. Have a great day.